welcome, 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 welcome to Let's Get Quirky live stream. We're glad you're here. We're glad you've joined us. Man, man, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm learning as we go. So if you see me look around at the screens here, I've got one on this side of me. I've got one right here and I'm gonna be trying to keep up with comments. Yo, homie, what's up, Chris? Also, so you know that it's like a minute delay I've tracked, so if you say something um, on here or I don't reply back via the video within a minute, that's why. So I'm gonna be trying to keep up, give us lessons. I see that, uh, see that's already a minute there, and uh, technically aren't live yet, yet, live yet. So, this is Let's Get Quirky, and the reason why it's named that is because one, I'm a little quirky, so we gotta have some fun, and we're all stuck at home, right? Well, most of us are. And two, the name of the business is called Quirk Advertising. So our whole business is now completely remote, and we are trying to figure this out like you are. We've been remote as a team for a long time, but trying to help our clients that are going remote in that way, so we totally get it. And we decided to do something new and try it up, try to get build a community because my actual heart behind all of this is because my number one motto is to, or my one motto is that I'm always one person away from changing the course of my future. So that just means I gotta meet people all the time. And I love, even the team that we built for Quirk and the clients that we have have all been people that I've just had a conversation with, met through someone else, gone to coffee, and we've built relationships and business that way. So I've changed even dynamically a lot of things, even in my life, by a couple of people that have been a huge influence. So that's my motto, and that has stopped quite a bit due to uh, the Rona 2020 and the uh, rationing of toilet paper. So I am now stuck at home, and I'm trying to figure out how to do this. So we decided to make it virtual for you guys and make it, uh, Drew agreed. <laughs> so to make it virtual, and to try to hopefully get in each other's homes and start some conversations and see how can we can learn from each other and use some of this time wisely so that we come out of this even stronger than ever. So yes, that's why we're doing it. Um, we are remote and staying home. So you can join me every day this week at 2.30. I'm gonna jump on at 2.30. I'm gonna have a main topic of the day. I'm gonna try to share some tips that's hopefully helpful to you that you can learn from and grow your business, but then also create some discussion and do some live streams with some people that I'll interview or do a live stream of something on your end if you're live, and we'll go from there each day. So we're gonna try it this week, see how it goes, and if it works, we'll keep it going and start this little virtual community as we help each other grow. So the topic of today is, does your website pass the grunt test? Mm, right like what does what does that mean well when you pull up your website does it pass what we call is the grunt test and we got this model from StoryBrand. you're gonna be hearing about this company story brand a little bit today I'll talk a little bit more about them here in a little bit but this whole topic and why am I talking about websites well guess what everyone's doing right now they're online and if they want to find about you they're gonna look at your website because that's the only way they can find out about you anyways right now so that's how more people look even before all this happened and went down with the hashtag stay home. Um, how do you decide who to meet with? Oh, Jake, good question right off the top. Well, I'm gonna decide, <laughs> I'm gonna decide that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm actually trying to first work through our team and figure out how we can help better you. And then we're going to be asking you guys um, based off topics from what we're talking about or not, what are things you wanna hear about? And then we'll pull in the right people and uh, we also want to find people that are just keeping their cool during all this so that we can all have more positive feedback and news versus all the negative, which if you are dealing with stuff out there, we're praying for you and we hope that you come out of it. Um, if you have family members that are affected, uh, we've already had a couple of people that we know that have been affected by the coronavirus. So when it hits home, it gets real. Um, so let us know if you need anything, prayers, uh, we're here for you guys. But uh, that's how we're going to decide is we're going to decide based off of some feedback we get from you. And if you want to send something to me via email, james at quirkadvertising.com, or you can just message me on Facebook and I'll get it after this feed, and then we'll go from there. But the grunt test, so I'm talking about does your website pass the grunt test? And there's three main things I want to talk about today as far as when it comes to passing the grunt test. And that first one is what do you offer? So when someone pulls up your website and what they say is you should be able to offer these three things, 
within the first five seconds of loading your web page. So once it loads, you count one, two, three, four, five. And if you can't answer these three questions, then you're failing as a business. Now, I'm not here to critique your personal website unless you want me to. So at the end of this live feed, I'm actually going to use these principles and critique one of your business's websites. So if you want to post your website on the feed, then please put that down below in the comment. Just post your website. Hey, it's free promotion for you. Just tell everyone about your business, post your website. I'm going to pick one at the end of this stream to do a live stream of and use these principles in to show you how it works. So you can do that anytime throughout this. If you have any questions anytime throughout this, please post the questions. Again, there is a one minute delay in this feed. So if I don't answer it right away, it's because of that one minute. Okay, so let's get back to the topic. Sorry, squirrel. Does your website pass the grunt test? The number one thing is what do you offer? So when they load the page, does it simply say, and what we call the top half, the um, letterhead, which is your top of the fold, which is a, a newspaper, in that, before they do anything else, before they scroll or click, does it tell what you offer very simply? A lot of people that even have really creative names and logos for their site, but doesn't actually say what it is they do, even though it's a cool name, they'll put a statement that's like, creative solutions, innovative solutions for your business. And you're like, okay, well, what is it that you actually do? So the idea is that you simply put what it is you do. So if you are a lawn business, then say we're a lawn service, or if you're an IT company, put IT company, or IT solutions for your business, or when we do marketing, we're uh, marketing advertising. Now, if it's in your name and it's simply understood, then you're kind of doing that already. So if your name of the business states simply what it is you do, now if it's not, then that's where we say you need to put something on there that says what it is you do in some way or form in the header, subheader usually, um, before you get to call to actions and whatnot that we'll get to later. But that is the first question. Does it actually say what you do? And it's funny how many people will say, yeah, sure, and they'll pull up their website and they're like, oh. Or they'll get a friend to, to review your website. Does it say what you do? Just by pulling it up. And if it doesn't, then, then fix that because that's something that people are going to your site. They want to make sure that it is you can help them with the problem that they need solved. And if your website doesn't actually say what it is that you do, then that might actually deter people not knowing that you can solve that problem. Oh, we got the first website on there, jonadigital.com. Oh, no, we got a review possibly for one. Get yours on there in the mix. Um, how? Okay, second. How will it make their life better? That's the second question. So if you say what it is you actually offer, great, good. Now we know you can at least solve the problem that I have. How is it gonna make their life better? So this can be done with a statement, philosophical. Um, it can be done a number of ways. Uh, sometimes it's imagery, but usually it's the words first. So how does it make their life better? If you do the lawn service, maybe it's something to that you solve a problem that a lot of people have when it comes to lawn care because they're not reliable or whatever the problem might be, you put on there a statement that's like, we're here for you, reliable, on time, whatever, how does it make their life better? And sometimes that can be done through what we also call is, um, uh, wow, I'm losing my train of thought here. What we call is uh, props, so props. What's the word here? What, what am I trying to get to? Oh, we got another website, impactoverattention.com. Post your website and I will review one of them at the end of this live using these three principles. Um, and wait, so value proposition, there it is. So value proposition is what I was looking for. Oh, we got another one, keepbaseballgreat.com. Okay, keep them coming and we'll pick one. And we might just go through all of them later after, who knows? So I'm just saying post it, just in case you don't get picked. Um, Value propositions, sorry, that was what I meant to say earlier. When you're trying to show how does it make their life better, how can you do that in the top of the fold? What can you say that draws them in, that's, that's selling, telling them you solve their problem? Not just saying what it is you do. That's the second piece. And the third one is how can they get started or buy? So this whole grunt test is really just a three simple process that you can do. You load your page within five seconds. Can you say what it is that you do? How is it that you make their life better? and then what you actually want them to do to buy or get this service. So what you need to do with that is just put a button, very clear, usually it's in the top right hand corner, a big button that's a different color and bold and says buy now or 
schedule a call and tell them what it is they're actually going to do. Don't put contact us because they don't know what that means. They do understand that it means they're going to reach out at some point, but they don't know how. That when If I send you a contact, is, are we going to set up a call? Or are we going to set up a consultation? Or, or, or what? it's easier for products because you say buy now or buy specifically this item or what is you're trying to sell. And most people don't even do that, which is very surprising. And it should be very, very plain what you want them to do because that's how you build your business, right? And that's how you grow your business. So put the button on there. So if you've got a statement that says how it is to make their life better, it tells exactly what it is you do, so it's very clear to understand, and you've got a button that says, please do this because this is going to happen. Ours is schedule a call. People know when they click that, they're going to schedule a call with us. That's what, they, that's what we want them to do as a first step, as an introduction to our business, and it's very clear and understandable. So those are the first as many things of the website. So why do I choose website? Well, the website is such a big tool. Obviously, I said it before, people are looking and use that. Um, it's a part of what we, we call the main two things we do in our business. What's up, Taylor? And the main two things we focus on in our business are clarity and story before anything else. And we'll get more into that later. But a part of that story and clarity, one of the main tools that are used are websites. So we thought it'd be great to focus on the website even this week some as we hit different points and review some websites live. So again, if you want your website reviewed live, then post it in the comment and I'll pick one here in a little bit to review live as I go through these principles. But I just stated the three main principles for the grunt test, <clears throat> the grunt test for your website. And if you can complete those three things, you're already gonna win. You're, you should actually see interaction increase just by doing those three things because a lot of people aren't doing them and you'll win and surpass the ones who aren't, especially the ones that do the same thing that you do because you're going to be more clear and understanding. Now, I have a question for you and this question has a lot to do with design and I love design and think it's great and think it's very helpful. Um, eye catching, all those things are very important. I have nothing wrong with design, but my question is, are you interested in being clever and having an incredible design for your website or more interested in making sales? I'd say especially in these times as we are stuck at home trying to, some of us refigure out our business, some of us are really hurting in our business, I would say sales. That's the number one thing that keeps us going, right? Like we have to sell to move forward in business and do more things to even spend more money on great design. And I would say that the words that we use, and especially this grunt test, is just a foundational piece on your website, is way more important than design. Now, design is still great, and I think paired with the right words is incredible. But sometimes we just need to take what we have, um, especially if some of you that need to bootstrap this or not spend any money or just go to people on your, on your team. What's up, James? And you just need to take what you currently have. Don't spend money on design. Oh, we got another one, fetch me champagne. Oh, we got belovedperceptions.com. They're coming in, y'all. That's gonna be hard to pick one now. I've got choices. I will pick one of these sites here in a little bit and review them. Um, thank you, Amy and Katie, for posting those. So, where was I going? Boom, boom, boom. Lost my train of thought. Oh, design. So again, you just need to go back to your site that you have right now. Don't spend money on design and just rethink about it. Say, how can I just move what I currently have? If you have some skill set to move things on your site, great. If you have someone on your team that can easily do it, great. Just try to answer those three questions first. And there's tons more we could do. So if you ever have questions or things you want to talk about outside of this conversation, please jump in. What's up, Lauren? Wow, it's been a long time. Um, but for now, answer those three questions. I promise you, if you do those even this week and you figure out how to just switch those things around, you should see a better return from the views that are on your site, understanding what it is you do, and taking action on that main call to action. So, why do you know this? Well, because it's important. And your website's a very important piece. A lot of people use it as a digital business card, and really it needs to be used as an interactive tool to drive sales. And that's what we try to do here at Quirk Advertising. We try to drive sales to what it is we're trying to get accomplished. And a lot of that has to do with words and placement. And we do a lot of coaching just on websites in general because of that. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So look at that for your website. Take some time to go through it. Um, do we have any questions? Uh, please post them that have to do with these three steps. I would love to help you if you have any questions on the grunt test for your site. Um, I know 
We've got some people watching. We've got some comments on the different websites. I've got to pick one here in a minute. But if you have any questions, let me know because in a minute I'm going to play a video. I'm going to try to pick a website during this video and uh, we'll do a live of that or a live share of that website and then implement these practical steps right now. Might as well, right? Show you how it works in my mind based off seeing a site that we could see at this moment. So this video I'm going to share with you is from Book Video Club on YouTube and they're also bookvideoclub.com. This is explaining who StoryBrand is. So StoryBrand, this is the model we got this from. We're huge StoryBrand fans. So um, you're gonna hear a lot about them in the future if you stay in touch with me. It's just a piece of what we offer in Story, but it's such a foundational piece. And uh, you know what? Let's do random giveaway, random giveaway, which I'll see in a minute. First person, actually I'll tell you what the giveaway is first. Building a story brand. So the company story brand, which I'm about to show you a little breakdown of what that company is here in a second in a video. They came out with a book. And uh, what's up, Don? Hope? Good to see you guys. Well, good to see your names pop up. Um, this book I'm going to send to someone right now, and I'll send them an Audible to their Amazon Audible account. So the first person, this is uh, this book breaks down the entire framework that we offer in our business. Um, super helpful and guiding you on how to share your story in a way that's actually not telling the <laughs> spoiler alert it's actually not telling your story <laughs> what does that mean it actually <laughs> it means we're telling your client's story through the lens of what you offer so it's telling their story through the lens of what you offer which makes them way more engaged with your product because you're actually telling their story we're all selfish people and we want our story told hey Harold Oh man, I need to call you. Um, building a story brand. I'm gonna give this book away right now. And all you have to do is type in all caps, what I want you to say, give me that book. Give me that book, kind sir. <laughs> in all caps, give me that, D-A-T, book, kind sir, in all caps, with your email for the Amazon account and after this feed the first person that has posted that will get this book in audible sent to them so let's see who wins that here in a minute katie frost yay so that's when we're doing a giveaway here i'm going to share this video once i can uh, cue it up here we get to the right screen this video explains story brand i think in the best way possible it explains what it is they do it gets you more excited about the book and i'll see the first person to actually uh post the comment here while I'm watching this video and then picking a website to review. So check out this three minute video, well worth your time, gives you a good insight of story brand and uh, how you can actually develop uh, your company in a way to position for story. What's up Ryan? Check out this video. Well actually hang on, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Check out this video. Story Brand by Donald Miller. In Building a Story Brand, Donald Miller guides you through a framework to help you clarify your message so customers will listen. These days, it's desperately hard to get anybody's attention. The average consumer encounters 3,000 commercial messages a day, and most of them get ignored. In Building a Story Brand, Donald Miller introduces us to a powerful framework that has been getting and keeping people's attention for thousands of years. If you want to get attention for your prospects, services, or for yourself, the author teaches you how by using a powerful story formula. Here's an example. Kyle Schultz was a photographer who created a course to teach parents how to take better photos of their kids. He launched with $28,000 in sales. His message was the power of photography in the hands of parents. After working through the story brand framework, his messaging evolved to, we help parents take better pics. And the copy on his website went from 1,000 words down to less than 200 words. Instead of telling a confusing story, Kyle invited customers into his story. The result? His second launch to the same email list produced $103,000 in sales. Don't think for a second this book is about learning to tell your story. In fact, the author argues that telling your story is a great way to go bankrupt. Instead, try inviting customers into a story. Companies need to understand that the brand is not the hero. 
The customer is the hero. That's the only way to engage them. And the brand's role is to guide the hero successfully through their challenges. You want your brand to be the Yoda to Luke Skywalker, your customer. So how do you accomplish this? How do you invite a customer into a story? Every memorable story is built on a simple framework. A hero has a problem, meets a guide who gives them a plan, and calls them to action. Failure would be devastating, but the guide navigates the hero to success. Take any blockbuster movie and you'll see this framework applies. Most companies waste enormous amounts of money trying to tell their story. The truth is, nobody cares. But every human being wants to be invited into a story. They want you to offer them a vision of a better life, help them overcome challenges, act as their guide, and take them to a climactic scene in which their story ends happily. Start by going to your homepage. Are you making the story about you or the customer? As you're reading the book, take notes along the way. Brainstorm and craft a clearer message for your brand, and then update all your communications. Your marketing should invite your customer into a story. If it doesn't, you're certainly losing thousands of dollars and you might even be losing millions. Oh no, I just realized I wasn't on audio. <laughs> Technical difficulties. So I don't know how long I was not on audio, maybe a minute. Um, basically I was saying, <laughs> that's awesome. So I wasn't on audio there for a minute. I had muted myself for the video and then did not unmute, which is a audio technician error on my end. So I'm very sorry if you missed out. Um, I do come back, I'm gonna comment that Grant Daniels, what is up, man? Glad you're on here. Um, LaVon Link, how's it going? So basically, what I was saying a second ago, I'm giving away this book, Building a Story Brand, the thing you just heard about and that hopefully made sense in the video. If you want this book, first person to comment, give me that book, kind sir, in all caps, that D-A-T, with your email to Audible, gets this book sent to you for free. Okay, so now I'm going to review one of the websites that was posted. So if you give me a second here while I get this figured out, don't go anywhere. I promise we're okay. I just got to do some sort of magic and I'm going to make this work. So give me a second and get this going here. And I've got my son showing up in the room, so there's great dynamics. Um, all right, let's see if I can get this working. Uh, per. I think I've got it loaded. Don't go anywhere. Oh no, I didn't type in the right thing. One second, please. Um, all right. I think I've got it, I think I've got it. Okay, great, now I can come back. One second, let me pull this up. <laughs> Your audio isn't working, yes, I'm sorry. It does come back, I promise, it came back. It's already back. Um, this is the lip reading portion of the video. <laughs> okay, sorry, let me switch back over. I'm a bad, I need to show you. Sorry, I'm back, I'm here. Just give me a second, I'm going now to another screen. <gasps> Did I change? It worked, great, okay. So now I'm going to review a website. And yes, I chose yours. Amy, we're going to look at Beloved Perception. So thanks for letting me 
review this one. Uh, for those of you that didn't pick your website and you're on here right now and you still want me to review your website, just post a link and we'll actually take a handful, which right now there is a handful. So all of you might get a review and we're gonna review your website later uh, with a video and we'll send it to you. We just need to know where to send it. So maybe send me a message or post your uh, email on this and we'll make sure to get you that later. But let's do an actual um, review right now. So pulled up below perceptions. I'm just gonna go through the grunt test with you guys. There's so many other things that I could always bring them talk about in a website. Um, so we could always do more extensive stuff later if you really want some help and support on your website. But right now I'm gonna do the three main things on the grunt test. So what it is, sorry, whoa, something happened on my screen here. Okay, so let's start with the first one. What do you offer? Let's start at the top left where people would read. Beloved perceptions, okay. I'm not sure what it is you offer yet by your logo, but that's okay. Not everyone solves that by their logo. Then I'm gonna go to the right. We got photography, graphic design, our story. Okay, so I'm guessing you do photography, great. You do graphic design, okay. Um, and our story, okay, great. Nothing's wrong with that, um, but now I'm, I'm drawn down to the image. You got this image of this guy in the water, right? I'm not sure how that relates necessarily unless you're just trying to show off some photography, which is fine. Photos and graphics, okay, cool. So you have photos and graphics. What is that you're actually doing for you? We do photography for small business or we do all sorts of photography. How can you describe it in a word or a few two words that photography and graphics for your business or like what is it for exactly? Or is it just anybody? I do this in general, I'm a freelance photographer and graphic designer. Like that's sweet something that you state um, that shows what it is you actually offer. Now I read, our goal is to make you, your family, and your brand look its best. Okay, right there, your brand. So it's showing all sorts of things, right? So it might just be a freelance person that does this, um, which is fine. Um, let's go to the next one. How will you make their life better? You want them to look its best. Great. But what's something else that you can do that maybe solves problems in the world of photography and graphic design? Um, do you offer turnaround times that are faster than others? Do you um, offer packages, let them keep everything, or let them, whatever, I don't know, things that people run into with photography and graphics, think about those things, what are they? And what are some words you could throw? And I would actually make the main header, your photos and graphics header there, that type of statement that draws them in to something that makes their life better. Think about those things. What are things that, problems that you solve, things that you can answer in that statement? And then below that and the subtext that you have there, um, I would put, freelance graphic designer and photographer that's it do those things and, and if that's what it is that that you do um, it is a little hard to read some of the words on your screen with the image in the background and I would actually throw in a, a little tip images you use should probably show what it is that life looks like after um, they have your product so maybe it's a family looking at their photos or enjoying life together or a company looking at their design and photo or something and they're smart I don't know sometimes it gets a little cheesy and you don't want to have to use stock photos but the idea is that you're showing what life would look like um, not just promoting the product the things that you've already done which you can still do um, but you don't want it to be confusing right you don't want things to be confusing you want it to be clear um, and lastly how can they get started so when I look at your site and I look at this top here I know you've got a lot of things on here that shows what you do, which is great. Um, and our story, I can tell you right now, most people don't care about your story yet till they know that you can solve their problem. So fixing some wording on solving their problem and then putting a button. I would put it on the far right over here. Um, I would put a big old button that says schedule consultation or submit. Well, it needs to be something that actually creates an interaction with you. So make sure it's either a consultation, a call, a uh, booking, a, whatever it could be, but make sure that's the page that draws them into what you would probably consider your contact us page, but you can redo that in a way. Um, still have a contact page if you want, because that can help with SEO and building even like people that have like brick and mortar. But if you're just a freelancer and you want people to do something, then put a button up there that makes sense on what you want them to actually do. And if you want them to have a call with you so that you can see if you're a good fit or an introduction call or whatever, schedule your call, schedule your meeting. Um, and that's very simple. Oh, great, you want me to do that? Cool, it's easy for me to figure out what it is to do next to actually get you to do something for me versus trying to find, if I want something like this done, where do I go? Like, where, where, where do I, which I know you've got some good stuff on here, 
Um, there does have, there we go, contact us on the bottom of the page. It's just not clear. It needs to be up at the top, and it needs to be worded differently. It's not contact us to tell what it is you actually want to happen. So there's using the three grunt, grunt tests. Hopefully that's helpful, Amy. Um, not tearing apart your site, just uh, showing how easy it is for us to get away from stuff like this that simply helps your website um, and improves what it is that you're offering in a way that makes it simple and clear to understand. And that's our goal. So that's our goal. Um, let me switch back here. Hopefully that works. Nope, it's not. Not the right one. Camera man, yay, cool. So that's what that is. Um, my bad, hold, give me a second here. And if you end up watching this video later today and you still, and no one has posted, give me that because of, maybe it's grammar and you just can't post anything because of grammar. Give me that book, kind sir. You can post that and I will put it to the first person that comments on this video. I mean, they win, fair and square. So pick the website, we walked through it. Amy, I hope that was helpful. Um, all you guys can look at your website and we'll look at some of the ones as well that I've posted. So even if you see this video later and you wanna get in there, then post the video or your website and maybe we'll be able to re review that later. Um, but thank you guys. I uh, really hope this was helpful. And if you want to send us a message or send me things that you want to hear about in future episodes, please email me, james at quirkadvertising.com. This is our very first one, and I'm figuring out how to make this happen, but I want to make sure it's helpful for you. So if it's not helpful, then there's no point in me doing it. And if we're not creating community around us to help our business grow, then there's no point in me going live because it's not about me. Um, super helpful. Thank you so much, James. Awesome. I'm glad that was helpful, Amy. Um, but again, if you have some things and ideas that you want to send, put it on the comments, send me a Facebook message or email me, james at quirkadvertising.com. I would love to help in any way we can, even through these times, um, even offer some mini free sessions to try to figure out like how we can support you. And then maybe out of the, once we come out of this together, we can kind of help you position yourself in a way to really help. But really right now, there's ways you can position yourself in business. Um, that in these times you can clarify what it is you're trying to say and that leads me up to our discussion for tomorrow that's what we're going to talk about so are you asking these questions how should i position my product now that customers needs have shifted in these hard times are you asking yourself are my email cam campaigns not even going to work now like are they even going to work or are you asking yourself how do i cut through the noise and continue to reach my customers I think everyone blew up emails on the COVID-19 and everyone started sending their updates via email. I, think I got an email from every company I've signed up with in history about coronavirus and how can you cut through that noise and position yourself in a company to be either something of just good news or helpful tips or there in these trying times. Um, is it even appropriate to still sell my product at a time like this? Uh, it's not a bad question. And I think that if you got morals and values and things that you're wanting to make sure um, well done. Thank you, bro. Thanks, guys. Y'all are awesome. But uh, let, that's what the it's going to be about tomorrow. So we're going to start asking some questions. Maybe we'll even bring someone in if I can figure that part out. There's a technical side I got to figure out to get someone in with me on my little setup. But I'll figure it out. And uh, we're going to answer those questions tomorrow. And then we might even just review another website just because it's really helpful. We know we've gotten a lot of um, great feedback when we review websites. So we can do that again tomorrow and maybe throw in a new tip on websites. So join me tomorrow at 2.30. If you want to do the live stream, let's get a little quirky. Um, until then, stay safe, ration that toilet paper, and stay calm because we will get through this. So let's uh, let's close it out with uh, some more dancing, shall we? <laughs>